I am going to do, I'm going to do something rather special today. I'm going to review a tower speaker, the new Dyne Audio Emit 30. I usually do bookshelf speakers. And indeed there is an Emit, uh, there's two Emit bookshelf speakers. There's also a center channel speaker and a larger tower, but I'm just going to do the 30. That's what I'm going to do. But if you wanted to do uh, a whole home theater, in the mid home theater, you could, but I'm not going to. I just wanted to do this tower, which is, by the way, $1,699 a pair, which I came to realize was quite a value. Really, I'm serious. It's an amazing speaker for this kind of money. But I'll get into the details, well, starting right now. Well, first of all, I don't know if you watched my review of the Dyn Audio Evoke 10 a few years ago. It's a little stand mount speaker. I fell head over heels in love with that speaker. It was like super transparent. Now I go way back, way back with the Dyn Audio sound. And as much as I love the Dyn Audio sound, it could be a little softer. I felt that way. I felt a little soft, warm, sweet, pretty sound, nice sound very enjoyable sound. But the Evoke 10 was a high transparency sound. Anyway, big deal for me. Evoke 10 made a big impression on me for a little tiny speaker. So along comes the Emit series and the Emit uses the same exact tweeter as the Evoke series. So right away I felt like, yes, we're off to a great start. The Emit 30 uses two six inch mid woofers and this very sound, soundly constructed cabinet round back. There are two base ports, a uh, single set of binding posts. Um, oh, and since it's such a skinny cabinet, it has outrigger uh, feet to keep it nice and stable. It's not going to tip over if you have young children or pets or anything. Um, it's vinyl, actually they call it laminate finish. It comes in black, white, and walnut. Like all Dyn Audios, it is designed and engineered in Denmark, but it is in, in fact made in China. I know, I know so because it says so right, right there on the back panel. But no worries, it's, it just feels like a true Dyn Audio speaker. The build quality is absolutely top notch, so. Rest easy, Dyn Audio fans. Setup was uh, easy as pie. Uh, they required no toe-in whatsoever and still achieved a very sharp center focus. Nicely done. Um, they were about 14 inches from the wall behind them. When I say 14 inches, I meant from the wall to the back of the speaker, by the way. Uh, the electronics were my Oppo Blu-ray player Denifreps Ares DAC, not the Ares 2, just the original Ares DAC. Um, and the amplifier was the Gato Amp 150. That's it. I did do one speaker comparison. I'll tell you about all that stuff later on in the review. Actually, no, oh, two, two speaker comparisons. Before we go any further into this extravaganza, uh, I'm going to just put up all the specs right now for your perusal. And I'll leave them up on the screen for a while. So they can soak in. And then I will tell you about my sonic impressions. I just had a good time listening to the speaker. It did, well, here's the thing. It followed directly on the heels of the Triangle Comet 40th anniversary speaker. Now that speaker is a high excitement speaker, very lively sounding speaker, high energy speaker. It's a horn, or well, a horn loaded tweeter, very fast, detail, exciting speaker. And by comparison, the Emit 30 is a sweet, full-bodied, <laughs> rich sounding speaker. Its upper bass, lower mid-range is on the warm side of neutral. Pleasingly so, pleasingly so. And the Comet is, as I just said, sparks. <laughs> sparks are flying with the Comet, definitely. So they're going in very opposite directions. 
So my, my opinions aren't what's important here. My job is to describe what's going down, <laughs> what's going down with the sound of these speakers. And I like both, just for different reasons. The, the Comet is fun, exciting, just like keeps you on the edge of your seat. And the Emit 30 is satisfying. It kind of boogies, it's got some weight to it, it kind of feels, it, it kind of is, um, I was going to say like a warm bath. No, 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 that's, that's the wrong, wrong way to think of it. But, it. but it is this weight to the sound that I found very, very satisfying. Yeah, it's a very satisfying sound, especially in the mid-range. Mid-range sounds so right. You just hear it on vocals, on piano, on strings, on horns. Uh, just very, very right. Very well thought out. Very well sorted out, I think, as the British like to put it. I'm so used to reviewing small, smaller speakers that I was eager to see how low this speaker would go. And the answer is, well, the mid-40 hertz range, which is, to be honest about it, that's what many of these uh, stand mount speakers that I've been reviewing go down as low. But there's just sort of, a, let's say, a comfort to the way this one gets there. It just seems to be lower in distortion. So it's not going to get you any deeper. It just seems to be cleaner in the way it approaches those lower frequencies. So if you really want to shake the room, for EDM or reggae or dance music or something, it's still going to need a subwoofer. So the first recording I want to talk about is by Fred Hirsch, the Fred Hirsch Trio. It was recorded at Master Sound Studio in Astoria, New York. I was present at the session. Bob Katz was the recording engineer. And uh, it was a special session in a number of ways, but one thing that was unusual, very unusual, was that Fred had this idea that an, instead of recording the same tune over and over again and sort of perfecting his performance and, and our sound, is that he was going to record three or four tunes in a row, different songs, and then like a set, like a mini set, so that he could get a flow of songs. And I, we thought this was a great idea. So that's what we did. That's what he did. And it, it felt great. So instead of being bored, like hearing the same one over and over and over, they was like, it was like a little mini concert. Anyway, so I'm playing this recording. It's, I'm time traveling back to the session. And the tone of the piano, the attack of the, of the hammers, the felt hammers hitting the strings was so right. The tone of the piano was so correct in terms of scale and attack and everything about it was really, really excellent in, in terms of having that scale of a, of a, of a nine-foot grand piano. And the draw, I can't remember the drummer's name, but the, the symbols, the delicacy and the airiness and the transience of the symbols was just stunning. Really, really superb. And I'm listening to this thinking, these speakers cost $1,699 a pair? Really? Yikes. Just really, really, really good. Really good. Bass was great. Really that fullness of an acoustic bass, very, very, very well presented. No complaints. <laughs> I, was, I was in awe. So the next up is Robin Hitchcock. The recording is called Spooked. It's from 2004. If anything, I love this recording more now than I did when it was new because he's so good. He's such a great uh, songwriter. He's such a great singer. And on this recording, he's joined by Gillian, or is it Gillian Welch, and David Rawlings. It's a very acoustic record. The songs are great. Their, their harmonies together are so beautiful. I was going to say, it's a, is it an audiophile recording? Well, not strictly, but it might as well be. It's that good. And you just get their sense of them on the microphone and the way they they were just, their breath, their presence is so perfect. And of course, this is all coming through the emit 30s. So, so beautifully, it's just stunning, just absolutely breathtaking. And they do a cover of Dylan's Trying to Get to Heaven. And, and Hitchcock, by the way, Robin Hitchcock loves Dylan. 
he just does so many covers of Dylan songs over his, the length of his career. He has a special knack for doing Dylan songs. And it's not that even that he makes them his own, though he kind of does. It's just that he, I don't know, he just knows how to sing Dylan better than anybody, sometimes even Dylan, which isn't all that hard, actually. But anyway, um, the freaking Emit 30s were letting the magic happen. Because this recording, Spooked, is a magical recording. So I played the good sounding recordings, so I wanted to play something that was a little more marginal. So I grabbed Arcade Fire, uh, The Suburbs. It seemed like with every uh, Arcade Fire, each one got worse and worse. Their, their recording quality, they just kind of lost it. Their early record sounded pretty good, and then they got worse and worse and worse. This, they got much worse after The Suburbs. But anyway, I played The Suburbs, and it was, it was tolerable over the E-Mid-30. It wasn't awful. It, I, my ears were not on fire or burning or anything. It was okay, as long as I didn't play it all that loud. At moderate levels, it was acceptable acceptable and, and reasonably enjoyable, which was what the test was, was all about. So yes, this speaker, though it is fairly high resolution, it's not going to kill you to play iffy sounding recordings. That was, that was the purpose of playing the suburbs. I don't know what possessed me, but the next recording I played was a was Dorian, that's the, the label, recording company, and it was a Bach organ recording. The the deep, deep, deep shuddering bass was really amazing, considering that this is not a gigantic speaker with two six inch woofers. Very nice. Very, very nice. I was at this point, kind of concerned about my neighbors on the other side of the wall sort of, you know, banging on the wall. They didn't because it was, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon or something. But it, it, it could have gone that it could have gone that way. But they, they were probably out at this, at this point in the day. In any case, yes, these speakers can shake the walls. And but it, more important than just brute power, it was the quality of the bass, the speed of the bass, the airiness of the bass. And the, the, uh, the church, I believe it was recorded in church, uh, was very well presented and beautiful sounding. Just really, really beautiful. Because I think organ recordings are tough in terms of getting that balance of, you know, the power and the glory, so to speak, is, is, is tough. And the EMIT 30 was doing a hell of a job. Now, I do want to remind you again that th this, this review comes on the heels of reviewing the Triangle Comet. And the Comet was such a, this is such a study in contrast. The Comet was light on its feet, fast, but not warm or rich or full, like this one, right? Now the Comet was $2,200 for this made in France speaker, blah, 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 really beautiful finish. This one has a vinyl finish. That one had this luscious rosewood finish. Again, contrast, We're, they're, they're doing different things. One is all about the beautiful finish, one is, I love it. I love my job in that way that when people say, and they always do, <laughs> so Steve, what's the best? Well, <laughs> what do you want? Do you want beautiful wood? And a speaker that's fast and quick and hyper detailed and very exciting? Or do you want a speaker that's rich and warm and sweet and has a vinyl finish? I mean, as we used to say, different strokes for different folks. For a comparison, well, I didn't have another tower speaker at any price, just hanging around here. So I used the Kef LS50 Meta, because it's about the same price as the Emit 30. For, for music, I used the Holly Cole Temptation CD. I love this CD. I never tire of playing it, because, well, when I first heard it, I hated it, because I hated what Holly Cole did to Tom Waits' music because I thought she just didn't get it. But that's because she made it her own. She didn't try to sound like Tom Waits or interpret Tom Waits. She just made it her own thing. That's what makes it good and makes it last. But in any case, um, well, the Emit 30, I heard a complete human being. Her body was there along with her voice. And over the LS50, I heard more of her voice. I heard her expressiveness as a singer. Her phrasing was much clearer over the LS50. 
then over the Emit 30, I just felt that she was more of a complete person. Going back to the LS50, it sounded like she lost a couple of pounds. Actually, more than a couple, a bunch. It was a really interesting contrast. And then, you know, going back and forth, uh, the LS50, there was more air in the recording. There was more transient life to the recording. Uh, more, more transparency is not the right word, but, you know, going back and forth, it did sound like a smaller speaker because, in fact, it is a smaller speaker. So, you know, it is what it is. But what the Emit 30 can do in terms of that, that soul, it adds that soul. Or not, I shouldn't say adds. It's just giving you more of that part of what's in a recording in terms of, let's just say, releasing it. Because, well, that's what's being captured by the microphones in the first place. I really believe that. It's all there. It's just whether you get to hear it is always the question. So there you have it. The uh, Dyn Audio Emit 30 is a very welcome surprise. I'm very happy with this speaker. I'm very happy with the price. I think at $16.99 a pair, considering what you get in terms of sound quality, build quality, appearance. It's very, it's very presentable. I, I didn't take pictures with the grills, by the way, because then it just looks like a rectangular box. But it's neat. It's a neat looking speaker. It's very, let's say, Scandinavian might be a, the best way to describe it. But anyway, fits into, and you know, you don't have to get a speaker stand, I guess is also the obvious. So I'm, uh, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy that I reviewed this speaker. This is it. I know you guys are on the edge of your seat. You've been waiting for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. And now, well, here it is. I'm very happy that Mark sent this in. He's from Branchburg, New Jersey. The horns are DIY and they use BMS dual concentric compression drivers running 400 Hertz to 25K. The base enclosures use 15 inch JBL drivers running 19 Hertz to 650. The amplifiers, well, there's a concentric Frankenstein 300B monoblock on the horn. And then for the base enclosures, a Crown XLS 1502. Front end has a Don Sachs custom line stage which Mark says is fantastic. There's also a PS Audio direct stream DAC with a network bridge two, and also a PS Audio disc player. Good going, Mark. I'm not feeling enough love, not, not for me, but for the Audiophiliac viewer systems of the day. I wanna hear some feedback about this segment. So please let me know what you think. And speaking of letting me know what you think, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And uh, well, <laughs> if you like what I'm doing, speaking of liking, please like me, <laughs> please. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's super easy to do. All you gotta do is hit that button right, right over there. When you do, hit the notification bell. And the other thing you can do while, while you're here, check out my Patreon, which can be found at P-A-T, R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac. And then, well, hey, you're here. Kick off your shoes and check out the playlist for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews, not to mention, but I will, the interviews plus music reviews. See, I changed up the order. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. So again, Thank you for watching, and I really, really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.